Good evening, this is Kevin Bees, and I am here today to talk to you about tip number 25 on the uh, life-changing business tips. And the tip today is actually is a really great tip. It's something I learned from uh, my mentor, uh, a guy that I worked with for half a decade, uh, Tony Robbins. And it's the idea of the six human needs. Now, this idea originally came from Maslow. Maslow uh, set out this premise that there is a hierarchy of needs that we as humans we look to satisfy, we go through these needs and depending on where we are in our life conditions, we'll be aiming to hit a different need. Uh, Tony has kind of popularized this and he's reframed it as the six human needs. And he argues that everything that we do in our life and in our business is to meet one of these six human needs. So how is this gonna be useful to us as business owners? When you understand that everything that you do is driven to meet one of these needs, you can then understand well how to change things in your environment, how to do things differently to get maximum fulfillment, to make maximum progress. When you understand that your customers are wired in this way to meet one of their six human needs, you can potentially change your approach to help fulfill their, their needs much, much easier uh, in a much quicker way and so that they're more fulfilled. If you can fulfill a customer and have all of their six human needs met by working with you, then they're gonna to wanna to stay with you and they're, they're not gonna to wanna to go anywhere else. They're gonna be addicted to you. Um, and of course, also with your team members. If you have a team member uh, or any one of your team members, if you understand what are their human needs and you can uh, help create a role or a position or some conditions in the environment that would allow them to fulfill all of their six human needs, they're, they're never gonna to wanna to leave either as well. So this is kind of the idea and the premise. So if you're not getting it, there's a real value in understanding this for yourself, uh, for your team, for your customers, even with your family, family relationships. So let me talk you through this. What are they then? And let me give you a couple examples of how you can use it. So uh, you may, if you have a pen and paper, write these down because I'm going to get you to use them to, uh, to make an assessment of where you're at right now. So the first human need that Tony shares with us is the number one need is for certainty. We have a strong need to feel safe and to feel secure, okay? Now, the challenge is if we have too much certainty, it can become a bit dull, it can become a bit boring in life. Things become a bit too routine and... So we need something a bit more exciting, we need a bit of variety, okay? And that's the second human need. So you may call it variety or uncertainty. We need something different in our life, something to stimulate us. Uh, it could be a bit of adventure, it could be just uh, even something different in the food or the drink we eat. So, so something different, a bit of variety. That's the second one. The third human need is a need for significance. Now the need for significance is to feel important, to actually feel like you're, you're good enough, that you're, you're valued, uh, yeah, that, that you're, uh, you're, you're doing something where people uh, feel that, yeah, you know, this guy's great. So once you have significance, the fourth human need that we talk about then is love and connection. A love and connection is about feeling that love and connection in the community, that belonging, feeling as though you, you belong and you have a connection with someone. Okay, and number five then is the need to grow. We need to be green and growing, otherwise we're ripe and rotten. Uh, as humans, we need to grow, we need to progress. It's, it's part of the thing that makes us unique uh, as a species. And then number six, uh, number six, the sixth human need is the need to contribute, the need to give beyond yourself. Uh, and there's a bit of a higher purpose there. So as a quick summary, the need to feel certainty, the need to have uncertainty or variety, the need to feel significant, the need for love and connection, the need to be green and growing, and number six is the uh, need to contribute beyond yourself. Now, if you've written all of those six down, then we can use them in a minute to help assess where you're at in your business. Um, I have a couple of examples. I've got a client coming to speak to me tomorrow, and she has a very successful business. She's doing very well for herself, and she's looking at how can she retain her staff for a longer period of time. What is it that she can do to help keep them in the business longer? Now, my suggestion and the thing that we're gonna to discuss together is these six human needs. If she can go through these list of human needs, even with her staff member, even having a conversation with them, and understand how is the business, how is their role in the business fulfilling each of these needs, she's gonna get very clear understanding as to where there may be some gaps, some things that she could fill up more to help people stay. So if she went through with the staff member or even if she made an assessment herself because she probably has an understanding, she could ask, well, how certain do they feel in this role? 10 being the most, zero being the least. Right, if they feel like a 10 out of 10 of certainty, they feel safe in the role, they feel like they've got a place there, they know that the work's gonna come, uh, that could be very valuable. Then what about the variety piece? 
it may be the case that they have a high connection with variety. They may get a lot of different customers come in and they have the interaction or they get to do different types of work, or they may not. And that could be a big clue. If they're feeling a little bit bored or stagnated, that could also be a reason why they, they may want to move on. Significance. Are they feeling really important in their position in their work? It, uh, do they feel as though they have maybe a status in the organization? Do they feel as though uh, what they're doing is, is valued by the boss, by the customers? So significance. And then loving connection. Do they come to work and feel connected with the people that they work with? Do they feel as though there is a, a good environment for that? Okay. And then do they feel as though they're growing? Very frequently, uh, people can get bored and stagnated because if they're not growing in their position, they're not growing in their role, then they're going to want to go and find something else. Uh, not everyone, but some people uh, are, really have a high need for growth. As an individual, we want to be growing. And then, of course, the, the sixth element, it could be the contribution. Is there a desire or is there an opportunity for them to contribute more? Are they feeling like 10 out of 10, they contribute really well to the organization? Are they, is the organization doing things for an external, you know, external part? Are they doing some charitable things? Do they feel as though they're making a good contrib excuse me, making a good contribution? So... Uh, for my client tomorrow, when we go through this then, she's going to get very clear understanding you know, for each of her staff members, how they're feeling. Every person is going to be different in that environment. Some may love that there's so much certainty there, um, and others may be really bored by the certainty, want way more variety. So there could be a couple of things. We may understand people as they come into her organization using this model, so we find the right people who are going to fit the environment, or we may begin to understand the individuals that are in the organization and begin to tweak and change their role or their position or their opportunity or even their perception to help them uh, feel more fulfilled in their role so they stay longer in the organization. Uh, so that was, that's one example of how you can use it. You can use it with your team. Of course, if you understand which of these um, human needs your customers are driven by, you can begin to make your, uh, your service tailored to them. You can imagine someone who's more driven to be significant and important, well, you wanna make sure that your service is helping them realize or helping them become more significant or more certain. Or on the flip side of that, if there's someone who's more about love and connection, you wanna be taking your time to uh, make sure they feel loved and, and connected. You can't, in, with someone like that, you can't just be down to business and do the task because uh, after a while, they're probably gonna get fed up and, and leave and go find someone who can, who can make them feel the love and the connection. Um, this is totally true even if you, know, you run a coffee shop. My wife is a great example for this. She will go to a coffee shop again and again and again because people there remember her name, they remember her order, okay? And that connection, just when she goes in there and they remember a little bit better, they ask her something, and the next day they ask her again, is that connection is the piece that she's found, probably more so than the coffee. If the coffee was terrible, she probably would, wouldn't go. The coffee has to meet a minimum requirement, but uh, she gets that loving connection that's, that's so super important to her. So look, there's, there's a couple of examples there. Uh, I wanna share with you one more example. I had a client today, a fantastic lady, another, she has a very successful business. Uh, it's, it's doing super well. And what can happen frequently with, with my clients as they grow very well in their business and they're having success, they sometimes get to the place where they're like, well, this is going super well now and a sabotage kicks in, like they, they want to stop and do something else, like I, I've done this. Now, that could, could be the case, that may be an appropriate thing to do. Now, what, we, what I want to understand before someone makes a choice like that, because potentially could be giving away a lot of revenue, a lot of profitability, I want to make sure that, that they really understand what's going on. What is the real trigger behind this? And for me to understand the trigger behind this, straight to six human needs. And we went through an analysis of her business and how she feels about her business, and we understood out of 10, how does she feel the business is meeting her needs in each of those areas? And so certainly she had a heap of certainty because she knew exactly what she was doing. She had a heap of variety because she was getting all of these different customers from different backgrounds and she was making new products and new designs. Um, significant, she was feeling important. She was you know, known in the community. Uh, she was being awarded for, for what she was doing. Uh, the love and the connection, people would come in and they into her outlet and she would have conversations with them and she would build relationships with them and they would feel, um, they would feel touched that she'd taken the time out, out of the end of the day. So those first four were meeting her needs pretty well. And then we got to growth and contribution. And it was very interesting, and, and this can happen frequently. When we have the, those first four, the needs of the personality met, um, the next two, the growth and the contribution are about the spirit they, they weren't so well met. The level of growth that she was feeling in her business, because it had grown, the business had grown so well, she didn't personally feel like she was growing anymore. She, she had higher revenue, higher profitability, and she could, just, she could just do this. There wasn't the growth for her personally 
in, in the business right now. And then the sixth piece was the contribution. She didn't feel, even though she was having success, making great products, uh, helping people transform the way that their home look, is she didn't necessarily have the contribution, she didn't feel as though she was contributing at the level that she wanted to. And so this was a great realization, you know, in using these six human needs, because it would be very easy for her to say, look, I've had enough of this, I wanna go and pick something else. But once we understood that the real root of the problem for her and her business was, you know, she wasn't growing as much as she wanted and she wasn't contributing as much as she wanted, then great, it gives us a new idea. How can we help find you the next level of growth in your business? What would it look like if we did this? What would it look like if we did that? Okay, and how can we use your existing products and services to help contribute to more people? Or is there something else that you wanna be doing outside of your business? Maybe the business doesn't have to meet all of your needs. Maybe there's an additional thing that you can do as a hobby or as an interest that helps fulfill that need. Um, now, as a great thing uh, for this particular client, we did find a couple of things that she could do within the business to get her more excited about the growth, more excited about the contribution. And she's gone away with a clear idea now about this is where I need to focus. If I do these things, then the business is still right for me. Whereas at the beginning of the call, she potentially could have said, hey, I have had enough of this business. I'm gonna go and do something else. So I've, I've dropped a lot of ideas on you right now, but I like to finish these calls uh, with an action. If you have your business right now, I'd like you to do an assessment. Write down those uh, six, six, those six, um, write down those six needs and rate how does the business meet your needs at a level 10, 10 being the most, zero being the, the least, and see where the gaps are. If you're not at 10 across, if you're at 10 across the board, you're gonna love your business, you're gonna be so excited, you're gonna be in this business all the time. But if you're finding you're getting the lower numbers, you're down to like a zero, a one, a two, or three, whatever else, then let's understand, well, what, what is it? What is the gap there? Now, the great question you can ask when you do this activity, when you see your numbers for the business, you can ask yourself, what do I need to notice, appreciate, or believe that would help me feel more connected with this business? So what do I need to notice, appreciate, or believe that would help me feel more connected with this business? Now, those are powerful questions because sometimes is what you need to notice, appreciate, or believe. You just have a change in perception. You see the business in a different way. Not, nothing has to change in the, in the reality, but your perception changes. You can begin to notice some of the things that are happening in the business that you maybe have been turning a blind eye to. You may need to appreciate what it really brings to you. You may have forgotten for a while about well, the amazing benefits that are coming from the result of being this business. Or you may uh, begin to appreciate that actually, if you're your own boss, you don't have to go and work for someone else. And maybe you've forgotten about that for somewhere. You may begin to appreciate that you have the flexibility of hours that you, you, know, you wouldn't get if you work for someone else. So uh, your action, write down those six human needs, rate yourself out of 10 in terms of how the business is, uh, is impacting, you know, impacting you. 10 being the most, you are feeling the most connected, is meeting your needs at the highest level, zero being the least. And then ask yourself, what do I need to notice, appreciate, or believe to, uh, to change, change the way I feel about this? Now, you can apply this as well to anything else in your life. Uh, if you have a relationship, this works very well when I work with people on their relationships. How is the other person fulfilling your needs at a level 10? That becomes a very good, uh, very good insight to understand. If you look at that for each other, uh, you, and your, you and your partner, and then focus in on how do you fulfill the other person's level to get them to a level 10, ask them, how, what else can I do to be fulfilling your needs to a level 10? Yeah, they'll tell you, <laughs> and it's, it's a very great thing to apply. All right, I, uh, I know I aim for two minutes. I think I've gone significantly over on this one because there's, there's so much to talk about. We could probably do a, you know, a whole week on, on this very topic. But key summary, certainty, variety, significance, love and connection, growth, and contribution. Anything you do in your life is a vehicle to meet those needs. So if you're not feeling fulfilled in something, assess against those needs and then you'll see where the gap is and then you can take some actions to close that gap. If you wanna know more about this, let me know. I've got a, um, a great tool that will help you assess yourself personally and understand which, which one of those six needs is the one that drives you more than the others. So uh, just drop me a message or, or write your name in the comments below. Um, yeah, just say you want that and I'll happily send it through. Have yourself a great evening and I will uh, catch you tomorrow.